Oh, I think they're doing a great job. A lot of them are. Good afternoon, Dan. How are you? Not too bad, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Radio K-Man's Talk Today with Sterling Dwayne Evans. But I do have some questions. There are more questions than answers. Radio K-Man's Talk Today. If you're ready to talk... We're willing to listen. Well, I really enjoy this uh, program today. Cayman Islands, for most listeners' participation program. May God bless every person. Hey, good afternoon and welcome and thank you so much for joining us here. It is truly maybe a bit rainy, but what a perfect opportunity to speak to our Director General at the Cayman Islands National Weather Service as part of their public education program. So please, stay tuned. For talk today. Radio Cayman's Talk Today, the Cayman Islands' foremost listeners' participation program. We ask our listeners to avoid statements or comments which are abusive, derogatory, malicious, or defamatory. Do not use any indecent language or make any statement which is false or misleading. Email talk today at candw.ky or call 1 800 534 8255. Courtesy of Flow. K Man's number one network that connects you to your world like never before. Let your voice be heard. Once again, here's your host, Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us as we have in the studio, Mr. John Tibbetts, the Director General of the Cayman National Weather Service. Always a pleasure to have you and your team with us from time to time and I must commend you for your continued public education program. I give someone, even me, yeah, somewhat of a semblance of interest. You know, the rain this morning, I thought, ma, will I get my hair wet? That was my <laughs> only concern, you know, but Susan had me covered. Hey, right, Susan? <laughs> Good afternoon to you, Mr. Tibbetts. Uh, thanks very much for having me. You know, this, um, hopefully, as we've seen a number of their press releases re- recently and having a number of your students, you know, as interns or even just coming and taking tours from different schools, getting us sort of aware that the weather is just more than, well, like I said, it's raining and or oh, it's cold, it's wind. Or it plays an important part in our lives, in our economy, in our travel, in our safety. Yeah. I think the... Um the the Cayman Islands National Weather Service has its its roots in the aviation sector. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, all of the aircraft that go in and come out of the Cayman Islands all require certain aviation products that the National Weather Service has to produce, mm-hmm. namely aviation weather observations and aviation forecasts, which are a bit different than your public forecasts. Um, even though the birthplace was in aviation, and, and that's fairly typical for, for a lot of weather services, um, you're right, the weather plays uh, an important part in just about every aspect of our life. Um, and so we're starting to build out the weather service into um, other sectors, notably the marine and the agricultural sector mm-hmm. and tourism as well. So. And even though, well, maybe I should ask, there are those of us who have this perception that you know, the temperature throughout the day is not as great and differential. You know, it's either degrees, you know, this afternoon and tonight now is negative four for argument's sake. So we don't have that great, you know, differential. But there is uh, sometimes some variation. Even this afternoon, you know, it's raining. You leave one part of the, of the country. You can call it a country, right? Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. The, we're, you not have. Gonna, we're, we're not going to row with that <laughs> too much. Um, the, uh, if you actually look at our, our long term, mm-hmm. uh, you look at your long term type history and you start to yeah. get look into patterns and what have you, yeah. uh, normally you'd get up in the morning, especially during the summer months, you get up and it's probably around 80 degrees already. Right, all right. And um, you, it's normally a beautiful, sunshiny day. And uh, That's my, a song, by the way. I think Susan is singing later. <laughs> By afternoon, you, you've got thunderstorms fi- firing off, but mm-hmm. the temperature's already risen to uh, 92, 93 degrees. Mm-hmm. I think our all-time record is about 95, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and the overnight, the coldest temperature that you got overnight is, uh, I think it was 52 degrees. Mm-hmm. So, um, But not the same day? Not the same, not, not the same day. <laughs> so um, actually, the 52 degrees occurred in, uh, I think it was in January. Oh. Um, so it's a, it's a winter month. And um, so the daytime uh, temperature, max temperature, would be much lower. Um, But um, during the summer months, obviously, um, you have these very extreme highs. And obviously, your nights tend to be warmer Mm -hmm. than than in the winter months. And I mean, if you realize this in the last uh, last two weeks, 
particular that maybe it's because I've just been doing some other things in the evenings, but you know, it reminds me of the books I used to read when they were set in New Orleans and, and there are the characters in the book sitting out there almost in like a small place setting, finding themselves drenched in this yeah. humidity. That's how the evenings felt when horrid. Well, yeah, um, the, but there are, uh, you know, Cayman is, is somewhat blessed in the sense that mm. um, we generally speak and have a fairly decent wind um, speed um, to keep us, um, uh, to keep the temperatures down on us to, to a certain yeah. extent. The fact that we're an island also uh, limits the temperature. Um, when you go up to, um, even in the northern United States, during the mm. summer months, it's not uncommon to get the temperatures up. Uh, 98, 100 degrees, yeah. which is hotter than us here in the Cayman Islands, but we're an island, and so the sea around us actually makes sure that our temperatures don't get too high. So we do should read a book in the United. You know. See, John, there was a mug all this evening, and she walked into my office just as hot as a satellite on the sea. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, what? <laughs> it's a novel I'm working on, man. It's a novel. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, it's coming to come. <laughs> no, but, but that's the, the beauty of it. And, and even just now with the rain, you know, many of our, our newer cars have the moment. The moment that's, that's what called the measure the temperature? Yes. Yeah. yes. I usually just call it Susan. And she says, it's hot, it's hot, and it's hot. <laughs> it's all out there. And you see, you're driving, it's you know, maybe 80 degrees. And then as you're driving, it gets you know, into the rain. We're seeing it cool now. So that evaporative effect can bring it down for a bit. Maybe you know, it's refreshing for those who are outside and get a reprieve. Right. Now the interesting, the interesting part about that, and and uh, you guys don't get as picky as I do <laughs> with regards to temperature readings, uh, but in in uh, the world of meteorology, mm. we're very specific yes. uh, about um, how we house our thermometers and how often we check for their accuracy, mm. um, especially with our, our linkages to um, the aviation sector. The aviation mm. sector are um, they have an awesome program with regards to how accurate those thermometers have to be. Hmm. and how we have to make sure that we have them cited properly and all kind of rules that we have to obey. So when we say the temperature is a certain amount, um, it's different than reading a thermometer that, that you've got thrown around the house or in your car or anything like that um, because we calibrate those on an annual basis um, and we make sure that they're properly cited and what have you. We even make sure the Stevenson screen that, that houses hmm. those thermometers is cleaned on a regular basis <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. but it's important too because I think when you're looking at you know, accuracy for all sorts of reasons, maybe not necessarily or in this jurisdiction, but um, maybe there's a, a case in court. There's a, a legal question to be answered. They want a matter of fact. Maybe it's some experiment has been conducted. Maybe it's an issue that you know the military or otherwise is doing something. And they needed to make sure the temperature doesn't rise. But even the contractor who's going to be out working, uh, she wants to pour her concrete that day. Yeah, can it be in the hotter, you know, than... Well, where, where it really comes in important and, and where we see it even more mm. is, uh, like, wind speeds mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, because, uh, I mean, you got... Uh, I've heard of um, court cases where they didn't want to pay out money because... Um, the, the mm. according to the average winds and stuff mm. like that, it wasn't really a hurricane or it wasn't really a tropical storm or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Who <loses>? So um, <laughs> it's very the actual yeah, in, yeah. the accurate actual information is important to it, but it also needs the understanding of a meteorologist. To be honest with you, because um, I, you know we draw nice pretty patterns around how a hurricane looks and how a tropical storm looks yeah. and stuff like that, but. The reality is, is that in the real world, the storm doesn't fit those patterns. See, that was probably the challenge, you know, and why I didn't become a meteorologist. You know, I didn't color well in school. I didn't stay inside the lines, you know. You didn't too? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if you know it, but I, uh, I have a, a kind of a nervous type condition. So even when I went to uh, forecasting school and stuff like that, they mm. would uh, tease me about um, how my hand would shake and mm. stuff like that. And so... Um, I, I actually had to press on my pencil a lot harder than most people would do. And so I've actually, I believe, broken a few bones in my finger holding the pencil, <laughs> to be honest with you. Another day, another person. Wow, have some fun today. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, for those who are listening, it is the good voice of our Director General at the Kimmage National Weather Service, Mr. John Tibbetts, joining us. And, you know, 
If there's anybody that could get me interested in the weather, it's you, man. You, you, you've always been passionate. You remind me of my, my brothers and two of my sisters. You just guys, you like the weather, man. You love the weather, man. You're passionate about it. I, um, well, I, I, I got to thank uh, Fred Sambola mm. um, for um, helping build the love for meteorology and me. Mm. Um, I, I've had, we've had to deal with some characters over the years. <laughs> Um, but um, yeah. uh, the interesting story that I have basically is, is that uh, when I was in sixth form doing my A-levels in high school, um, it was like about two weeks before I graduated. Um, so um, I went up to the airport at that time. My mother was working in a departure lounge. And my cousin was working at old U.S. Upper Air Station with Mr. Mm-hmm. Party, Mr. Frank Ralston and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So... Um, she goes over and, and we're going over there to see my cousin and, and she said, hey, John, um, how about this uh, for a career? You as a, a meteorologist. Uh, and well, she didn't say that. She said, weather, weather guy. So mm. I said, um, me, a weatherman? Never happened. <laughs> Two weeks later, um, Mr. Shellen Hislop um, uh, talked me into becoming a meteorologist. <laughs> So. You know, from the aviation sector, that, as you see, that's where our connection, you know, the offices have always been there. Um, question before we go to the break, and then we talk about the actual sort of program for now, but the heat index. I noticed from the forecast, uh-huh. you know, uh, Susan's reading the weather report and all the stuff, and then she says the temperatures, but it feels like, you know, okay. I mean. The, the feel like temperature and the heat index is mm-hmm. almost the same thing. Okay. All right. The um, if you realize that in the winter months, when we get these colder type um, or stronger type okay. cold fronts, you, we start hearing things about wind chill and stuff like that. Mm. So all of these are all linked linked into what the temperature actually feels like when you're outside. Um, we have some internal um, rules mm. in terms of when we put out a heat index. Uh, really and truly. It, January through March, April, May, it doesn't make sense to put out a heat index because heat num- heat index numbers are not very high at all. Mm-hmm. But when the summer months hit, um, we get a situation where the the max temperatures get is going to get into the nineties. Mm-hmm. Humidity is fairly high, mm-hmm. and your wind speeds are fairly low. Okay. Then we start yeah. to quote heat index on uh, for you because. Mm-hmm then it actually um, presents itself as a threat to people having heat strokes and what have you. Right. So there's the the instrument that's going to give you an accurate reading. It's calibrated. It's X degrees, whatever Correct. that is. But then it feels like, sounds like a subjective kind of... Uh, it. Um, you might think it's subjective, mm-hmm. but it's not subjective. Right. It, it actually has a... a, a long formula to calculate it and what have you that takes into consideration uh, these things. Um, we're going to have a, we have a little project that we're working on mm-hmm. um, that we're going to plan to put down a bunch of automatic weather stations around the Cayman Islands. And um, when we get those, what we're planning to do is is to make sure that you have uh, feel like temperatures on all of those that um, you could be up in Rum Point or you could be down in Public Beach or something like that. You're going to know what the temperature is like and, and what it feels like. All right. And, I mean, if you haven't, do, no, Susan says behave. Uh, see, if you haven't been in the studio and Joel's jamming, it's going to feel really hot, hot, hot. <laughs> so it's all good. All right. When that, we that's a different temperature reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you don't have the Kelvin to measure that, man. All right, Mr. Tibbetts, when we come back from a break, tell us about the public education program and you know the particular topic. All okay. right, nine four nine eight thirty seven. If you have a question, if you want to know what the temperature is going to be like next week at four a.m. on the twenty second of September, Mister Davis has it covered. Nah, he doesn't. Stay tuned for talk today. Nursing, education, social work, media studies, hospitality, electrical, plumbing, AC. Wow, I didn't even know that the University College of the Cayman Islands offered all that. Yes, all of that and more, as well as event management and QuickBooks. They also did customized training for our staff last month. Hey, didn't your son just graduate from high school? Take him so he can apply for the fall semester. Pursue your academic and professional goals at UCCI. Admissions are ongoing. Classes start August 27th. Visit them or call 623-8224 to learn more. 
does your business support or organise community projects that reduce crime, protect the environment, or improve the quality of life for the most vulnerable in our society? Submissions are now being accepted for the Chamber's Community Impact Award. Visit businessexcellenceawards.ky and apply today. The Chamber's Business Excellence Awards are proudly supported by Cayman National, Broadhurst Attorneys at Law, and Picture This. Tune in to talk today for the Celebrate Cayman Giveaway Contest. Celebrate Cayman is a national celebration of our culture, history, and community as we commemorate the 60th anniversary of our coat of arms. From August 27th to September 26th, Talk Today will be giving away daily prize bags for our resident history buffs. How well do you really know your Cayman history? Test your skills on Talk Today. Talk Today. But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands foremost listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back and thank you so much. You know, and and whether men indeed are you know not just knowledgeable but you know. They have some good comedic strikes, man. So, Mr. John Tibbetts, our Director General, thank you for sharing the afternoon with us, or at least a part of it, man. You know, during the break, I didn't say just in jest, but for the listeners, um, the idea, as I said, on the 22nd, you know, of them, September at 4 a.m., if you wanted to have an idea what the temperature or the weather would be like, you're not predicting the future, but there is, you know, uh, an ability or a process by which you guys, uh, as a meteorologist, can give us an, uh, an insight. Yeah. Um, the, the National Weather Service has uh, uh, different layers, as it were, mm. to producing a forecast. So if you wanted a forecast, if you call me and you say, well, John, is, is it really going to rain in the next two to three hours or four hours, whatever, this afternoon? Um, we would call that something more than what we call a nowcast. Mm-hmm. And, and we would look at things like the radar and satellite images and um, various other things that we have coming in and stuff like that. So that would be like a very short-term type forecast. Mm-hmm. Now, your general forecast that we that we normally put out, you, you're normally looking at a 24-hour period or a two- to three-day period. And that's a, that's a general forecast. And that would be a standard type situation. Beyond that, we have we produce uh, we can produce things uh, like climatological type forecasts. So, um, um, our climate office, uh, name especially Mr. Avalon Porter, he mm-hmm. can uh, actually um, pull out and, and you you give him a date and he can plug it into a program and and basically what it does is it looks over the long term and, and it says what happened on. September the 22nd, I think you, you threw mm. the date or something. Yeah. yeah. So it looks back on history and what happens on the 22nd, September the 22nd, it, it'll give you a temperature and a chance of precipitation and all that kind of stuff. So um, there are ways to uh, look further out in history um, in, in the future than, than uh, what you would normally look at. Um, we would um, normally, when, when we're talking about a public forecast, um, uh, now casting is more radar and stuff like that, but a public forecast, which is 24 hours, two to three days, um, we're using weather models. And, and I have a lot of problems with weather models because they can really make you look like an idiot. <laughs> um, and on, to a certain extent, um, there's a big problem with them because a lot of the data from those weather models are out on the Internet. And there's a lot of people going into them and, and pulling them up and, and looking at them and um, mm-hmm. They'll show us a, a low pressure system over the Cayman area, or a tropical storm, or hurricane, and and they're going like, ah, and they don't listen to the weather service, and the weather service tell them that's a bunch of stupidness. Because the models, right? Yeah, I think when it comes to the models and internet, President Trump will probably tell you there be a lot of problems with those. But we <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for now. Mm-hmm. The the idea that we have uh, science and art when it comes to weather forecast and meteorology. More science, more art, mixture of science and art. Weather forecasting? Mm. Um, it's more science than art. Um, however, um, mind you, the, the, there are specific ways you got to do things. Mm. And, and there are little things that you learned over the years um, in terms of um, what happens to your local weather. And, and we, we will look at things. And, and um, I, I remember uh, way back when with Fred Sambula and I, it was just the two of us, and it, it was a really hot day, 
and uh, uh, I, they hadn't built the Cayman Airways, the hotel that was Cayman Airways at that time. So we're talking way back in the 80s, uh, uh, late 80s and stuff like that. And somebody went out there and lit a fire. And Mr. Sambula looked at his sounding and he goes, John, watch this now. And within about 45 minutes, we had thunderstorms rolling. And there was no sign of those thunderstorms before. Um, but from his scientific uh, perspective and from what he understood from all his years of experience, he understood the impact of that fire on the possible generation of thund- thunder showers that day. Hmm. And, and this is you know, why when I say the art and the science, or watching it develop into um, various science where we into. So our students were considering some careers in science, don't ignore meteorology. And you've shared, as we will, uh, and before we end the program again today, Remind the students there's a lot of science, a lot of opportunity to do a lot of good things, interesting work, you know, one day the same as the day before, right? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, let me just, um, w- one little mm. slight tidbit from that, though, and that is, um, so I, I go to do an 18-month basic weather forecasting school in uh, Barbados when I was 19, so long, long time ago. Um and the course is 18 months long. 16 of those months was mathematics. Mm-hmm. So while we say it's science, okay, and, and please, it, it has science in it. It has science pouring out through your ears in it. Um, the reality is is that you better know your math. Yeah. And, and, and that's where I appreciate you emphasizing that. Because I think too many times we don't appreciate uh, the level of knowledge, intellect, and aptitude that is required. Uh, yes, the mathematical models, there, your weather forecast, and, but those have to be developed by someone. And then the application of it has to be by someone who understands, uh, what they say, garbage in, garbage out, right? Right. And, and, and the, the uh, weather forecaster or local weather forecasters need to be able to look at those models and, and understand that mm-hmm. they will kick out garbage and recognize when it's kicking out the garbage. All right. Now, this month's... Uh, sort of discussion or today's topic to take us through hurricane climatology yeah right. um and, and we we you know you're talking about math and and in when we're talking about climatology mm-hmm. and stuff like that we're talking about long-term averages okay now we, we do climatology for a lot of things in meteorology um one of those for example is is that um I will take all the temperature readings from way back in the 1950s to the present date and have um, some sort of average monthly temperature, average annual temperature, and stuff like that. And that's climatology. And that is based upon the specific data and parameters of the weather service. All right? But there is another kind of there, there's another type of climatology. I, I prefer to look at it and, and refer to it as more synoptic level climatology. Okay, so um, we get so many cold fronts each year. Okay, we get so many um, we get so many um, uh, days of the year impacted by uh, the Bermuda Azores high pressure system in terms of strong northeasterly winds mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, days in which we have number of days in a year in which we uh, have rough seas on the west coast. Okay, something of interest to the port and those <laughs> that are into the Northwest business. Um, well, what we're talking about right now is more summer type climatology, and we're talking about hurricanes. Okay, so um, the National Hurricane Center is um, the centerpiece of the uh, the whole program of dealing with hurricanes. Um, uh, from the predictions, uh, predicting of um, the tracks of the hurricanes the intensity of the hurricanes, even the seasonal predictions come out of uh, out of um, the, the same NOAA. They, they will produce those as well. Um, and they, they do uh, a lot of things in terms of things like um, bring the Hurricane Hunter to the Cayman Islands. Mm. That is from the National Hurricane Center. In, in Florida. In Florida. Right. So that is the center place. All right. Mm-hmm. And we, uh, the Weather Service has a program with them where we send our weather forecasters to go and work with them. Um, and it usually is in either one or two forms. Uh, they usually hold a workshop uh, once per year to develop hurricane forecasters. Um, every one of our forecasters have gone through 
and now two of them have gone back for refreshers and and so we're working on we're working on that but we also have at times um, have uh, attachments to them M- meaning that rather than going up there for a two week spell um, we go up for a one month period and we actually go to work at the hurricane center okay um, and it, it the hurricane center is is um, it's quite a specialized area. Um, there's a section that deals with the tracking of hurricane planes, Hurricane Hunter, as well as the um, Learjet that flies mm-hmm. much higher up. Um, there are also little private um, uh, aircraft and stuff like that. They're now even dealing with um, unmanned type aircraft and stuff like that that goes into hurricanes and stuff like that. So they've actually got a section in the government, in the weather service, uh, in the Hurricane Center that actually deals with that. There's also a section that deals with just the maps, hmm. the various another section that deals with various warnings. And then we're not talking about hurricane warnings, but we're talking about marine warnings and marine products. Hmm. Um, there's also a Florida aviation office there, and they, they have a forecaster there that sits down, and he's got this computer in front of him, and he basically has his aviation forecast in front of him. And all of the weather observations, the aviation observations come out. And any time the aviation observation doesn't agree with the aviation forecast, that forecaster then has an option to see if he's going to change the forecast. Hmm. So that's how that's how specialized that office is and so many different things you can do there. And think of us as the end user. We we're flying a plane as a pilot or as a passenger. Uh-huh. Right? And uh, you know, we need that information to be timely and to be accurate. Right. So we can get there yeah, safely. Well, the, the other the other thing too that that you need to realize about the Hurricane Center is is mm-hmm. that that Hurricane Center provides um, hurricane monitoring for the Atlantic Basin, mm-hmm. uh, but it also provides um, a, a hurricane warning for the Eastern Pacific Ocean. Hmm. So this year, nothing's really going on in the Atlantic. Okay. But the Pacific, the Eastern Pacific, has been really active. <laughs> so you would think that, hey, those guys are going to just sit down and don't do nothing this summer. No, they, they, they are quite very, very busy. Um, and one of the remarkable things is is that um, uh, when you sit down and you st- sit down and you think about Central America, for example, uh, 90% of it or more than that is Spanish-speaking countries. In the Caribbean, you got into English, and there's even a little bit of French. Um, so, but the hurricane center actually has to be able to communicate to both the English speakers and the Spanish speakers. Okay, and I'm proud to say that at, at one point we actually sent Mr. Powery, our, our chief meteorologist, to go and work at the hurricane center for I think it was two months or something mm-hmm. like that, where he was the translator that conveyed messages from the National Hurricane Center to the Spanish-speaking countries like Mexico and those countries. See, and this is that, that partnership, I think, that we talk about, you know, not just from the Cayman context that uh-huh. we've had, but you know, the global partnership that we can make you know, for a safer, you know, much more secure world. Yes. But it can become disruptive sometimes when we don't have that, uh, that level of cooperation and all playing to the same end game. Yeah. All right. Mr. Tibbetts, I looked at some of the information you shared with us prior uh, We'd appreciate it. When we come back, you want to go through it and give us a, a wrap-up? Sure, no problem. All right. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll continue speaking with the Director General of the Cayman National Weather Service as part of their public education program. So please stay tuned for Talk Today. Hi, I'm remodeling our bathroom. Hey. I have a few questions. Sure. What are some ideas to make my bathroom feel larger? How do I know if I'm picking the right vanity? How do I choose a new toilet or a new countertop? Also, the lighting is terrible. Can I put a window or a skylight? And do I really need an exhaust fan? <laughs> You've come to the right place. At Brand Source, we custom design kitchen and baths, and our talented design team can help answer your questions. Whether you're looking for a modern, functional family bathroom or a luxurious personal retreat, we'll help create that beautiful space that makes your home yours. And if you're in a rush for a new look and have a limited budget, our ready-to-install bathroom vanities built with solid wood and countertops of the finest materials are a quick and easy remodeling solution. For the very best in custom-designed kitchens and baths, visit Brand Source Home Gallery on Dorsey Drive in Industrial Park, Cayman's new kitchen and bath center. Kingsport Center takes pride in being more than just an ordinary gymnasium. 
For 14 years, their multi-purpose facility has been providing the community with a variety of sporting, recreational, and relaxation activities. King Sports Center has a bowling alley, lounge bar, multi-purpose rooms, powerhouse gym, rock climbing wall, bungee jumping, a 10,000 square foot rink, and so much more. For more information on the variety of services, call their friendly staff today at 946-5464 or email kings at candw.ky or visit www.kingsportcenter.com. King Sports Center, your one-stop shop for fitness, recreation, and relaxation. Attention Breeze Fusion fans and supporters. Registration is now open for the 12th annual Grand Cayman Breeze Fusion 5K Walk Run. We're calling on you to help us in raising funds for the NCBO and for the John Gray High School Musical Department. Registration is only $15 for adults if registered by September 30th. The walk run will take place on Saturday, November 3rd at the Smith's Back of the Air in Grand Cayman. But you must be registered by September 30th to take advantage of the lower fee. Visit caymanactive.com to register today or stop by Radio Cayman on Elgin Avenue. Talk today. But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. Thank you for joining us as we welcome Mr. John Tibbis, the Director General at the Cayman's National Weather Service as part of the Public Education Program, the Hurricane Climatology. And uh, what we could say this is September, you know, almost. Mm-hmm. A couple of questions. When we're looking at hurricanes, uh, I guess we've decided that the, is it man? I mean, is it nature? June you know, through November is the hurricane season. Right. Man and nature, who, who decided that? <laughs> was it you and Mr. Sambula? <laughs> Nature decided that. <laughs> um, well, first of all, in, when we're talking about climatology and stuff like that, when, when we're talking about climatology for hurricanes, let's, let's understand mm-hmm. that um, they've been tracking hurricanes for well over a century now. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got software in my office that tracks hurricanes back to the 1880s, I believe it was. All right, So it, it goes back a long ways. Um, and and based upon that information, um, several things have been uh, established, as it were. First of all, mm-hmm. um, what is established is um, what it would be defined as your hurricane season, or that time of the year when um, your hurricane season, your hurricane systems are more likely to form. So, uh, based on long-term averages, June the first through November the thirty-first every year, that's your hurricane season. So um, no matter what happens to the hurricane activity that year, um, the hurricane uh, hurricane season hasn't been extended or hasn't been cut short or anything like that. It's the activity in the season that 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 um, impacts mm-hmm. differently, and obviously, um, even though you put that as a hurricane season and stuff like that, we've had storms in May. Um, outside of the hurricane season, mm-hmm. we've had hurricane uh, systems that are in the month of December, in January, and mm-hmm. February um, that uh, fit into um, hurricanes, um, the, the hurricane pattern and what have you. So the hurricane season is not capping when you get hurricanes to form. It's just when they're most likely to form. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, based on the long-term averages and what have you, uh, a normal Atlantic hurricane season has 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. Okay, um, The peak of activity um, for both hurricanes and tropical storms is usually around September the 10th. So we are um, rapidly coming up mm-hmm. on um, that part of the time of the year when um, when you're getting what we call the peak of activity. Now, I know when you look outside there right now, there's nothing going on. Um, other things that we, we look at is in, when we get into uh, the climatology and stuff like that um, is uh, the Hurricane Center tracks things like um, when do you normally get your first name storm? Mm-hmm. When do you get your, normally get your first hurricane, your, your first major hurricane? So um, for them, for example, the first named storm it usually comes around July the 9th, okay? The first hurricane usually comes around August the 10th, uh, and the first major hurricane usually comes around September the 4th. So um, uh, according to that, if we were having an average year, theoretically speaking, 
you would be looking at having a major hurricane next week. Mm. And, and and that, when you say the peak is around September 10th, that's partly because of a historical data, as you put it in. Correct. Uh, you're saying hey, September is that month where, and specifically mm. around the 10th. Correct. Yeah, and, and, and that's, uh, as I said, it's long-term average. And that doesn't mean that you, your season might not be an outlier. Mm-hmm. I mean, if your season is an outlier, then um, it, like we were looking at this year, for example, um, we go look out there right now. Nothing's going <laughs> on right now. Um, yeah. You you would suspect sometime in the in the second half of the hurricane season, you might get to some sort of surge in activity September, October time, and stuff like that. Um, and if predictions are correct and stuff like that, then it'll be a bit more active in the second half than in the first half because it really and truly there really hasn't been nothing been out there too much to be able to talk about. Well, we see the forecast come out and sort of the predictions early part of the year and then there are some revisions as we go through. Right. What are we now for? Well, what was the, the forecast, uh, the predictions, and where are we now? Well, the, the predictions right now are for um, uh, an average to below average season. Mm-hmm. So they went from uh, average to above average to an average to below average. And really and truly, the the science of this is um, really to a certain extent up in the air in some regards. And, and when I say that, I mean um, you will have five different organizations and one of them might come out and go, well, you're going to have a really active season and stuff like that. And we did have one this year and mm-hmm. stuff like that, but it's not... It's not an organization that I normally look to to give us any sort of guidance as to how active the season is. That being said, you you never know when uh, when these when the numbers just are not going to add up. You know they're going to have an active year and the and they're going to look on it and they're going to scratch their head. Well, wow, what did we miss? I guess in the perspective of you know being safe, it's always best to be prepared. Yeah, uh, understand the eventuality is there. Right. But no, back to what you're saying, the statistical analysis, the math. Yeah, it gives us a, a chance to be able to at least, you know, potential forecast, no cast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But future then, cast. Yeah. Well <laughs> the other thing too is is with with things like disaster management and stuff mm. like that, and this is one of the things that we um that is very interesting is um the Genesis area. Um the Genesis area or, or the area where these systems form. Mm. Okay. Um normally the Genesis area it's kinda of like an ebb and flow. It starts in the Gulf of Mexico and Western Caribbean and propagates east, Mm -hmm. okay? And then in the latter part of the year, it propagates back west. So for the Cayman Islands, um, we are particularly susceptible when we're looking in the very early parts of the season Mm -hmm. or in the very late parts of the season. In between, you normally have what we call these uh, Azores um, high-pressure Hurricanes, um, and when not as worse, pardon me. <laughs> uh, these hurricanes that track across the Atlantic Ocean, and um, one of the advantages that the Cayman Islands has is, is for those particular type of storms, it has to travel such a far distance, mm. but at the same time stay far enough south to hit the Cayman Islands. Um, the Cayman Islands are all the way over in the Western Caribbean. And you get a storm that's form, that's forming uh, five or ten degrees north, and each day it's moving a degree or two north, um, as their normal track takes them on a west northwest type path. By the time it gets to the Cayman Islands, it's usually well up there, far to the north. Uh, the ones that we have a tendency to be worried more about uh, are the ones either those type of system, but they're coming in very low, or systems that form close by here in the Western Caribbean, Southwest Caribbean mm-hmm. and stuff like that, that, that those are particular ones that we pay particular attention to. And the scary part about it is usually occurs in the latter part of the year, uh, a latter part of the hurricane season, which means that seawater is really, really hot. So we have to deal with things like uh, rapid development and stuff like that. Yeah. From the perspective of safety and the, the regular guy who has you know, not a whole lot of interest in the weather, are there particular things that we should be paying to when the newscast is on and we hear about the forecast or maybe when we're outside and we're smelling the air, tasting the rain? Are there things that we should be looking at, you know, little tips and tidbits from John Tibbetts? Well, and this is, to a certain extent, this this is a little bit about the public education program mm-hmm. because we, we do try to educate the public and stuff like that and, and it, it, it will help them along the lines. 
Um, like, for example, uh, let me just throw something out there, a simple little thing that you could learn. Um, it, I'm going to go out either fishing or I'm going to go uh, for a day on, the, on South Mile Beach. Okay? If I had my smartphone with me, um, I could look at, at things like um, uh, the National Weather Service website and, and look at the radar and stuff like that. And we could see when er- you can see when areas of thunder showers are coming in mm-hmm. that might present a danger to you. Um, whether it's a danger to um, you in terms of potential lightning strike on Seven Mile Beach, for for argument's sake, or um, if you're out fishing, then um, those areas of heavy showers also have what we call downdrafts, which can make the sea very rough all of a sudden, mm-hmm. and then put you in a bad problem if you're out in the boat. So. Those are little things that you can actually learn and stuff like that and put to use in your general life. Now, when you're looking at the, the, the radar images, so you pull up the, the, the website. Was it National Weather Service? Was it, uh, I should know this. <laughs> Nash, uh, the oh, Cayman Isles National Weather Service, yeah. It's yeah. www.weather.gov.ky. That's it. Yeah, I see my family with it all the time. So you look <laughs> at it and there are things turning. There's green, there's red, and there's all. What does all that mean? Uh, well, those all have to do with intensity of showers. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. um, and it's got a color code, and the bar is usually up on the side, um, and it'll tell you if your showers are, are light showers, or moderate showers, or heavy showers. And the heavier the shower there is, the the, the greater the possibility for things such as uh, decreased visibility. So, mm-hmm. let's say for argument's sake, you're you're coming, um, you're you're, it's time to knock off from from work, and you're going home in the afternoon, and you look on the radar, and and there's an area of very heavy showers coming across. It might be somewhat dangerous for you to drive in in that weather, um, whether it, the road becomes flooded, or um, the visibility becomes limited, and 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 you can't see what's going on. Mm. So those are all little things that you can learn from the weather radar that um, it can help you put to use in your life. And that radar is real time. That is real time. Yeah. Well, let, let me relatively. just uh, relatively, yeah. and and we you need to understand it, but. Um, generally speaking, um, usually there may be something wrong with the clock, but if you see the images um, older than five minutes old, it usually means that there's something wrong with the clock. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the other option might be that something might be wrong with the website. Yeah. And so we're we're actually looking on putting getting uh, a weather app put together. The weather app is um, going to be something that we're going to release very very shortly. Um, there's going to be something come out in the media about it and what have you. Um, uh, and that weather app will be getting uh, data uh, from the weather radar. It doesn't come through the website, okay? So even if the government website goes down, for argument's sake, um, we will be able to get those radars onto that weather app, okay? The other thing that weather app will be able to do, basically, is we're going to we're planning to put a bunch of automatic weather stations to data from it. Um, and the, the first stage of it right now is to put one here, one in Cayman Brack, and one in Little Cayman, and get data from all three of them so that you know what's going on in the three islands. But we also have this dream about a, a major automatic list of automatic weather stations that we're going to include there as well. Um, so, and, and the, the, the delightful thing that's going to come about that is, is that we're going to actually have a sister islands forecast. Mm-hmm. That's going to be separate from the Cayman Islands public forecast that we normally put out. Um, the Weather Service is already working on it, and they, the Weather Service staff have been um, producing those now for a couple of months now. To be honest with you, it's just getting them out to the public and how it's done um, without adding too much confusion. Well, we look forward to being able to continue partnering with you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tibbetts. Any time that we can you know, help our public to be not just educated and informed, but enthused and maybe create another career path. Hey, we're happy to do so. Okay. So weather the weather the weather. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the afternoon, Mr. Tibbetts. Thank you very much. All right, Pleasure to be here. Always an honor to have the team from the National Weather Service. Director yeah, General, Mr. John Tibbetts. All right, when we come back, maybe some open line. I can try to encourage Susan to sing. You know. She sings like a canary. Stay tuned for talk today. Follow Radio k on, on Twitter. All the latest information, breaking news, community events, and more. Follow us at twitter.com slash Radio k Radio k Radio k newsroom. These are the biggest stories right now. 
With your latest headlines, I'm April Cummings. A 26-year-old Jamaican man is sentenced to seven months in prison for illegal landing and importation of ganja. Marvin Campbell was arrested in December when officers in the Joint Marine Unit intercepted a drug canoe with an undisclosed amount of ganja on board. Campbell also faced a single count of human smuggling. However, that charge was dismissed. In international headlines, an estimated 2,975 people died in the six months after Hurricane Maria as a result of the storm, with the elderly and impoverished most affected. That, according to a long-awaited independent study ordered by the U.S. Territory's government that was released today. These findings contrast sharply with the official death toll of 64 and are about double the government's previous interim estimate of 1,400 deaths. The suspect in a deadly shooting at a Florida video game tournament had previously been hospitalized for mental illness. That's according to some court records in his home state of Maryland reviewed by the Associated Press. Divorce filings from the parents of 24-year-old David Katz of Baltimore say that as an adolescent, he was twice hospitalized in psychiatric facilities and was prescribed antipsychotic and antidepressant medications. U.S. President Donald Trump lashed out at tech companies today, accusing Google and others of, quote, suppressing conservative voices and hiding information and good news. He cited no evidence for the claim, which echoes both his own attacks on the press and a conservative talking point. Google responded by saying that it never ranks search engines to manipulate political sentiment. Those are your headlines. From Radio Cayman's newsroom, I'm April Cummings. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Radio Cayman helps you to weather the storm during this hurricane season. One of the most crucial elements of hurricane preparedness is storm awareness. During the season, it is of utmost importance to pay attention to the latest local weather forecast as hurricanes do not suddenly form or strike. There are various methods of advanced notification. Utilizing such may be the difference between a favorable outcome and disaster. Both television and radio serve as excellent mediums with up-to-the-minute storm path information in the wake of a hurricane. Another method of tracking a hurricane may be only arm's length away. Your smartphone or tablet can be your most valuable tool before, during, and after a storm, providing countless numbers of apps with crucial hurricane information. Many apps allow you to track storms with moving radar and satellite imagery, plus offer alerts, current conditions, forecasts, advisories, and even video. This hurricane preparedness tip was brought to you by your community radio station, Radio Cayman 89.9 FM. Nursing, education, social work, media studies, hospitality, electrical, plumbing, AC. Wow, I didn't even know that the University College of the Cayman Islands offered all that. Yes, all of that and more, as well as event management and QuickBooks. They also did customized training for our staff last month. Hey, didn't your son just graduate from high school? Take him so he can apply for the fall semester. Pursue your academic and professional goals at UCCI. Admissions are ongoing. Classes start August 27th. Visit them or call 623-8224 to learn more. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to Dick. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk to Dick. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today and thank you for joining us as we have an opportunity now for some open line. Invite you to call and share your thoughts with us, 949-8837 or 1-800-534-8255. Give a special thanks to the National Weather Service in particular, uh, Mr. John Tibbetts, the Director General, for facilitating the you know, frequent you know, monthly public education program. Hopefully, as you know, parents and as teachers, even as students, consider careers you know, using our interests and aptitude for the math and the sciences, and to see the climatology becoming a meteorologist, that there's a lot on the offering. So certainly Mr. Tibbs and his team are always willing to encourage you, nurture you, speak to you, direct you, and guide you, and see where that takes us. But for the rest of us, 
So at least we're aware. And I think as Mr. Tibbet shared as he was leaving, you know, pay attention to little things, make sure that we put our safety, you know, first and foremost as we go with our families, whether we're fishing, whether we're out, you know, on a day at the beach, maybe we're leaving from work. And we think, hey, it could be a bit of a rain spot somewhere out there. Well, not just to keep our hairs dry or put the top on the convertible, but maybe it's our bicycle, maybe we're going to go for a run. We're going to know about the weather. 8949-8037-1800-534-8255. Call and share your thoughts with us. Now, I had a chance to ch- chat with a couple of individuals earlier. Uh, we took a drive to look at a few uh, sort of spots where they believe there should be beach accesses, but for some reason, you know, in their recollection, there were signs there and what are no longer. Uh, some, uh, even though there's a sign, uh, the path is still, according to them, even after you know, reporting it to the police, reporting it to planning, bringing it to the attention of a politician or two, you know, different agencies, even to the, the proprietor, whether it's a condominium development, a private landowner, the signs are not there, and when the signs are, the path is broken uh, or somehow impeded. Now, one individual said that there has to be a couple of things that should, without question, take place. Proper access to the beaches, without question, but equally, uh, those who use the access paths or who use the beaches to start to be mindful that there is a respectful nature to, to use the beaches and Obviously, sometimes people do it out of protest and frustration. Others do it because maybe they don't know any better. But maybe as a public, we start to understand that whether it's the, the beach, whether the public beach or other way, or whether it's even in our backyards, some of us could be a little bit more considerate of our neighbors and other users. But one individual shared that you know, oftentimes there seems to be increasingly reports from people who said you know, they walk along the beach, and according to one of the individuals today, it happened to her. You know, she was walking the beach, young child in tow, just chatting, looking at shells and the like, and had stopped. And wasn't there very long when someone, you know, from the property just comes down and says, oh, "You know, you can't stay here. You got to move along." I thought, well, wow, it's interesting. Now, is that something that we're having? You know, you know, encounter often in our country. If it is, what do we do about it? Because it could lead to an untenable situation. We're seeing similar things happen, not just in the Caribbean, but in Florida as well. A nine four nine eight zero three seven, or toll free with the compliments of Flo at one eight hundred five three four eight two five five. Invite you to call to share your thoughts with us if you want. You can equal a WhatsApp nine two five three two six one, and you can. Express, you know, your views. Now, school is getting on the way. Some of the schools were in uh, already. Some are getting set to go back, you know, primarily. You know, some of our students now are just getting encouraged. But something that maybe all of us could consider, you know, whether we're a parent or a pupil, or whether we're the principal at the school, or whether we're the policymaker at some, you know, private entity or even in government, how do we consider making education a lifelong pursuit? Someone was talking about, oh, yes, you know, it's uh, education is lifelong. We have to be, you know, continually you know, learning. But it, as a student shared with me recently, uh, says, you know, we can even make some of the most interesting subjects uh, difficult for students to engage, you know, He says an example is a particular subject that he enjoyed. But for whatever reason, it was more about trying to teach to an exam. And this is a student, as opposed to trying to teach to the student's interest to develop within that student a passion for the subject, an understanding of the subject. Uh, He gave an example. He said that they were doing a review, and this was in in a, a math class, and you know, there were a number of questions on the review. And the teacher says, we're going to ignore question one and question three and question five and you know, ignore these different questions. And he said, well, why? Oh, no, we don't, we don't need to know those questions because 
their problem won't come up on the exam. So you're going to practice you know, these other questions because they're the ones that more than likely will come up on the exam. And he thought, well, okay, so we'll understand how to do those questions and get them right if they're on the exam. But he thought, well, two things are very obvious. One, we're just learning how to solve the, the problem and get the answer. But do we really understand what we're doing and how we're doing it? And he said, secondly, well, what if the question you know, hasn't come up in the last 10 years, but for whatever reason, now it, it pops up? Are we going to be able to have that question as an option? What if it's you know, a question that is going to be the one that you have to do and then pick one of the other three? Well, you know, you'd be out of luck. And then he said, the third thing is, as has happened to some of his older siblings, when they go off to university, well, that question presents itself and, oh, we didn't, uh, we didn't learn that. That wasn't taught to us. Well, how do you pass math? That's the obvious answer. Now, with that, is that an issue that we're finding despite what we're hearing that we're trying to teach our children to be you know, critical thinkers, to be lifelong learners? Are we still teaching to an exam? Is it an isolated incident? Is it primarily in some schools? Is it a case where perhaps it's one particular teacher, one particular teaching method, one particular class? Now, this student shared, uh, he said, uh, his concerns you know, with the teacher wanted to be looked at sort of differently. Uh, of course, the parents became aware of it, and from there, uh, there were some other issues. Now, he says, I just want to learn. I'm going to school. It doesn't matter. You know, why is it that we can't learn all the questions? Let's go to our phones, though. Hey, good afternoon, and welcome. You're on Talk Today. Good, good, solid, solid, doing number one, you Kingston. Hey, good afternoon, sir. How are you today? Oh, I'm still in pain, but I listen to you. Ah, oh, man, sorry to hear that, man. I hope you feel better. I'll tell you tomorrow. Oh, uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. I <laughs> no. Well, uh, you make the phone, God will find us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, listen, what I heard you talking about, the access to the the rights to the beaches of Idaho. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. People is just talking, talking. Why don't they form a group and go up to the government and let them know, no, I'm not being rude to the government, any party in there. Mm-hmm. Make them know, plain and straight, look, all those places are there for us to use to go to the beach. Why are they closed off? Why are they grown up? Why can't we have the right to use it? Right. Well, presumably, you know, there has been... A group that has done that. Um, there's also, you know, attempts apparently to be able to do just that. But it seems that whether it's the you know the concerned citizens group or others, it seems that they have had a couple of challenges. I understand, you know, despite the application for uh, was it legal aid in order to be able to move forward with their challenges uh, to potentially. Some of the sentiments being expressed by officials that because the rights away weren't necessarily registered, then therefore they're not enforceable. When the view is that you know, they were acquired uh, by prescriptive right, and they Who were there all Who didn't register them? Well, I understand from some individuals who say that because they don't appear on the land registry, so they're not uh, officially marked there. Uh, that there isn't any way to enforce it, and uh, which seemingly, from what I'm uh, informed, is that that runs counter to the understanding that true the prescriptive right. So, if a access has been utilized for twenty plus years continuously without any sort of permission, and many right. of these beach accesses you know, have been there for you know probably ever and ever and a day. Well, I tell you what, I still say if they get up and form a good group and go up there, stand up and say, look, we have our rights here too. No, <laughs> yep. they don't need to make no, um, how should I put it, disorderly show. Yeah, Just man. make them no plain and straight, look, we want to go there too. We have our rights. Mm-hmm. Give us our way. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that, uh, you know, from time to time, and it's not just not just along the Sepal Beach, that may be the area that... On Grand Cayman, that people may see uh, the access to the beaches being somewhat, you know, important. But there are other areas that have developed 
with the Old East, whether further west, but even on, on Grand Cayman and Cayman Brack, uh, two things that struck me this morning. Uh, the lady shared that you know we're not seeing this as a as a national issue in her mind that she thinks it should be, but whenever you say anything or try to address it and you do you know with some level of civility and respect, it seems to be pushed over. Uh, one one particular example. She says that the property um, that is Plantana, she says it has a wonderful and marked beach access. And you go down there, you know, for the most part, they keep it well maintained. Um, she says she uses that one often, so she's familiar with that one. And she says, you know, even when there are times when the, as I call it, the hedge, I think she called it something else, sort of grows into the access. Uh, yeah, a simple phone call or even a, a query to anybody, it's addressed right away, so the access is there. But uh, right next to that property is the other, uh, was it the Pinnacle? They have a beach access that goes in a certain distance and then veers north and onto the plantana access. Why don't the two continue either side by side or why don't they you know, merge the two? Yeah. But her question was, why is one, the plantana one, well maintained and goes all the way through, but the other can travel you know, halfway down the property at the pinnacle, you know, north boundary, and then just merge into the, the other one? Why is it not required to go all the way through? Now, question to ask. Well, can it go all the way through? You said about the phone? Yeah, there is no reason for it uh, other than the the prickler bush that is there, as she showed me. Um, you know, it, it should be able to go all the way through, but for whatever reason, it's allowed to just you know, cut through their hedge and merge into the other one and uh, making it sometimes... You know, seems like preferences to some and cross for others, you know. Just turn one cross and make our two go into one. Yeah, man. You can walk right through. Any side you go, you're still going down to the sea, right. to the beach. But but the thing is, if you're supposed to have a beach access, uh, and she took me through different areas, and a couple of them were just showing different uh, points of access. Some there yeah. is an access, but no sign. Some there is a uh, a sign, but no access, and some, you know, even though there is access, it's impeded. A tree here, clippings there, uh, construction debris, different little things that make it, you know, visually at least, you know, uh, indicative that we, we don't want you walking this path. Well, I tell you what, I still say the people are supposed to have the rights, mm-hmm. no matter who. We, once it is supposed to be for the public, it's the public. It's not private. The hmm. same way they can stop you from driving on the road. Hmm. No matter where, where you're passing, it's a public road. And the same way you can go down to the beach, you have your right away, that's the public right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Okay, you could be a linear, linear, trilinear, I don't care. Yeah, man. You have your rights. One last thing, please. Of course, sir. I don't catch you too often with these open mics. No, man, that's true. I, I want to say congratulations to the government for what they're doing about this school thing with the dress code. Oh, now, excellent, yeah. The only thing I got to say against that, they should have put that out from the ending of school to make the parents know in time, get everything ready. Mm. Don't just wait to the last minute. True. That's true. one thing that burned me. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It, it's um, had a couple of interesting, just passing conversations yesterday with some individuals that I can share. Uh, some have commended the idea that we should have a dress code, but one parent said, "But wasn't there always a dress code?" You know. Now, was it that it was lack of enforcement? Is it that this one is much more stringent? Uh, she said. Uh, you know, it's not like in a case where he says she said, but she said, you know, we need to make sure that our children are smartly attired when they go to school. Uniforms are pressed, that the uniforms look good, and you know, the dress code is there. But if there is this notion, as she is hearing being repeated, that oh, if a student has an infraction on one occasion, and a second occasion, and a third occasion, that potentially, you know, something could happen to the student. Okay. You know, is the student being expelled? Uh, is that where we should go with the dress code? Are there more important things? Uh, wondering what the public thinks about that. I, I really, you know, 
interested here. Any final thoughts, sir? No, the final thought is to keep the dress code up and make sure when them boys going to school, the fans pull up far enough for the short game. <laughs> yes, sir. And make sure the skirts is long enough. Yes, and sir. I say have a good day. I say listen to you. Thank you for listening and for sharing, man. Enjoy your afternoon, sir. And behave yourself. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Can't promise you, but I'll try. How about that? <laughs> All right, we're going to pause and take a short break. When we come back, it'll be more open line here on Talk Today. Please, stay tuned. The Kirk Freeport Clearance Center is now open. Kirk Freeport needs to make space for new season merchandise and is offering clearance discount pricing on a wide range of china, crystal, jewelry, watches, and accessories in a brand new clearance store. Located in the Town Center Plaza next to Burger King in downtown Georgetown, new stock will be added all the time, giving you a brand new clearance store to shop every week. The Kirk Freeport Clearance Store is open in Georgetown now. Outrageous discounts with new stock all the time. Get down early and often to avoid missing out. We are in the hurricane season, and knowing what to do after a hurricane can be as important as preparing for the storm. After the passage of a hurricane, seek medical attention if it is needed at hospitals and clinics for those persons who are injured. Do not touch power lines and cables that are down. They may be active. Report them to 911 or the utilities emergency hotlines. Broken tree limbs should be removed from around homes or buildings if possible. This hurricane information has been brought to you by Breeze FM and Radio. Radio Cayman. Babe, not tonight. I need to be rested for all day meetings tomorrow. What are you talking about? I was almost asleep. You keep poking me and I can't sleep. That's the mattress spring I keep telling you about. Not me. We really need to get a new mattress. Tossing and turning, back hurting, can't sleep? It might be time to turn in your old mattress and go to bed with a new one. Browse the huge mattress showroom at Brand Source Home Gallery and pick the perfect mattress today. With mattresses to suit every budget, Brand Source Home Gallery stocks a wide selection of sizes and styles like pillow top and and gel memory fold. So stop tossing and turning and sleep better tonight with a new mattress from Brand Source Home Gallery, Dorset Drive, Industrial Park. Chamber members believe that a good education can change lives. That's why many chamber businesses fund scholarships, provide internships, and volunteer in the classroom. It's time to be recognized. Submit your education initiative and demonstrate why investing in education matters. Visit businessexcellenceawards.ky for details. The Chamber's Business Excellence Awards are proudly supported by Caribbean Alliance Insurance Company, Cox Lumber, and Deloitte. We're building resilience one pipeline at a time. For the past 35 years, the Water Authority has been working to build a reliable piped water distribution network to better serve you in both fair and stormy weather. Visit our website or follow us on social media for useful hurricane preparedness tips and important updates in the case of an extreme weather event. This hurricane preparedness tip is brought to you by Water Authority Cayman, suppliers of the world's most popular drink. Talk to Dick. But I do have some questions. Talk to today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk to today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. It's some open line, 949-8037 or toll free with a complaints of flow at 1-800-534-TALK. Let's go to our phones. Welcome. You're on talk today. Yeah, Mr. Dean. Hey, my friend. Good afternoon, man. How are you? All right, man. Just want to um, clarify something yesterday while I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Um, you see the water while we're talking about? Right. This is the education today. If you understand. Okay. All right. See when I talk about the arrival, you need a person arrival. Mm-hmm, right. That's because no matter what, no matter what happens, I have to remember that it's honor I have to have. Okay. You you know who you are, and like I said, I mean, yeah. yeah, you can't let them pull you down to their standards, right? That's right. If yeah. I act the same way as them, then why it's supposed to be? Yeah, you know better, right? better. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we're making sure when I call him, that's why I'm making sure I had to express, you know? Yeah, man, but thank you for clarifying that because, you know, I was thinking afterwards that, you know, that makes you 
uh, what they say, a bigger man, a better man. You know, not many of us, as, as I was saying, not many of us would have done that. We would be more inclined to say, you know what, I'll meet you where you are, and this is how you want to deal with it. Well, let me show you that, you know, two can play that game too, right? So that makes, that's what makes you, you know, an incredible individual, man. I commend you for that. And you already know it, you know, not you, but you know, already know it, it's not good to, I'm not, I'm not going to argue too tough over nothing. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, man, that's right, man. You, right. You're on the principle and integrity, man. you got character. As everybody should be around here, you know. That's mm-hmm. what we lost now. They lost their feet. They lost in, lost in memory where they come from. Yeah, man. They no longer respect themselves nor their society, huh? Right. Yeah, man. Especially on this little island, yeah. you, better, you better know where you come from. Yeah, man. Now, yeah, they, man. Thank you. Thank you very much all the time, you know. I well, got I got call you. Yeah, man, because I want to, um, you know, get some of those big goods, man. Make an order for that co- yeah. coconut thing, man. So, and I'm not doing no business on here, but I still need to reach out and place an order, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes man. But you know where it goes. Yeah, man. I always thank you, too, boy. We, we enjoyed the, uh, the car cake and, you know, the stuff here. So, thank you very much, all right? Yes, man. All right, blessings to you, man. Industrious entrepreneur, you know, excellent baker as well. Let's take one more call. Hey, good afternoon and welcome. You're on talk today. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to bring up a topic to see what where other people kind of stand on it. Of course, um, it's it's not really uh, germane to what you guys have been talking about today that I've noticed. Um, but I did call in last week or the week before with a similar topic, um, and it was uh, specifically about um, basically recall uh, voter. Yeah, politician recall as a part of our constitution, right? Which, right. which, as far as I know, we have no proviso for currently. No. Even under criminal um, circumstances, I don't think you can do it. Um, and it's it's bizarre to me that um, this isn't being discussed more often as like the single most critical constitutional amendment that we need, bef- you know, over and above any of the other things we've been talking about. Um, because it just seems like everybody has their their problem du jour now that that they're complaining about you know it's it's immigration or it's bank loans or it's jobs or it's the dock or whatever all of us have issues in our society now that we'd like to see addressed but from based you know on the kind of audience that I hear calling into your show and other radio shows it doesn't seem like a lot of people have much hope, much less, much expectation that the government, regardless of what side of the line they're on now, is going to solve the problem. They don't seem to. Mm-hmm. And um, I've said before that I've completely lost faith now that uh, the, the government, the sitting legislature of the, of the Cayman Islands, is working on the people's behalf. I just, I've lost hope in that now. And it seems like they're able to do whatever they feel like doing because there's no consequences other than maybe they won't get reelected. But once they're in, that's four years, they can do whatever they want. And they may get in or they may not get in later, but either way, we're stuck. You we know, don't I, have I, any recall power. And as you said about the recall, I mean, remember there were a, f- a number of individuals who were saying that if you're talking about a, a modern advanced constitution, when we discussed it back, you know, in 2000, uh, prior to, to 2009, that was one issue that was being sort of suggested, requested, but there were no takers, huh? Well, I mean, but you could you could say on the face of it that any honest politician would want to have a system like that in there, right? If hmm. you if if you're not afraid that you're not doing the right job, or if you're intellectually honest enough to admit that if you're not doing the job, even if you feel you're doing a good job, but if you feel if the people feel you're not doing the good job then they should have the right to remove you from office, right? Mm-hmm. So any all honest politician should be for it. But the fact that nobody's, nobody's stepped up to champion this cause, as far as I know anyway, yeah. it, it just suggests to me that we've got something rotten right in the center of our, of our democratic system, and we're not going to be able to basically enforce the people's will on the legislature once that election booth is closed without that kind of power because there's no consequences for malfeasance, basically. Right. Well, when you hear, you know, the, the term you know, honest politician, some would ask you, is that a misnomer? But now with that in mind, though, do we do we get to a point where, as a populace, we start to champion not just political advancement and constitutional amendments, but the, the agenda and the dictate 
of those who are elected. Uh, your your point, you know, I recall uh, a people initiative referendum, uh, issues of national importance, whether it's relating to expenditure or infrastructure. Again, I always question where are we, you know, the populace, especially the, the voting populace, and making our voices other than uh, during the, the, the campaign rallies and uh, on election day. Um, yeah, you're you're certainly right. We don't exercise our uh, political discontent visibly enough um, most of the time. But uh, Cayman is not a society that requires you to see it plastered all over the walls in posters to get a feel for what the people's will is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's cl- it's clear enough uh, most of the time. And in other cases, you hold a referendum or something of that structure, and then you know the people's will, mm-hmm. right? Because they voted on it. Right. Um, and yeah, it, it's not tenable for um, the, for the populace to be, um, you know, kind of helicopter parenting the day to day operations of a politician because that's what a representative government is supposed to do. It's supposed to execute your will, so you can't really um, check and balance every single decision. But but is that the thing? Do we it, 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 do we have good. a representative government? I mean, just generally speak. I mean, do we have that? In, I guess, in theory, but in practice, definitely not. I mean, in theory, I mean, you know, I may be handsome too, but in actuality, is that the case? <laughs> and the reason why I'm asking, not, not just to be jovial, but we we are quick, not, and this is why I like when you share your sentiments, because he calls us to, to start to think and ask questions. They're by no means, you know, uh, anything other than very respectful and pensive, right? But we as a populace, whether it's the voter, whether it's the person who is complaining about the politician not facilitating some deal or the other, we're quick to point fingers at the politicians, but we're not willing to hold them accountable or draw alongside to assist or do any of those things, right? It was, what, what is it that some say, oh, you know, eat them out, drink them out, and vote them out on election day? Why are we waiting to, on you know on that time? As you said, why not have a recall now so that the system can function better because there's a, a you know... In bad sense of accountability, I it, it it's not a direct correlation to what you're talking about, but I think I can kind of demonstrate the sentiment um, in a in a visible way. Mm-hmm. Um, if you recall, I can't remember how many years ago, but several years ago, they had those riots in London uh, that went on for what like a week or so. And I remember an American friend of mine asking me why the British didn't put down the riot um, quicker than they did. And I tried to explain to them that, for the most part, London is a very orderly society. So mm. the, the British didn't respond because they were expecting it to die down at any time. It's like, clearly, these people are hot under collar. They're going to come to their senses, and it's going to stop. Mm. And they kept waiting for that to happen and waiting for that to happen, and it didn't. So it caused them to respond too late. We have the same kind of blindness here in Cayman. We, we have this expectation that because the people who are in power are our neighbors and our friends and our family. There's no way they could be that detached from the society that they're supposed to serve as to operate outside the will and even well-being of that society. We keep, we keep waiting for them to come to their senses, and they're not. It's only getting worse. Hmm. You know, as a list, I think that this is where, you know, when we look at what is happening here, it's... As you shared, you know, time for the the general populace and especially the the voters and potential voters to become more actively engaged with what is happening in our society, so that the politicians have a better sense of you know what is it that uh, is expected of them. Uh, as you were sharing, I was just thinking, isn't it just in the last you know little bit that we saw a new prime minister? Uh, take over uh, in Australia, just within its own internal party struggle, as it were, without any sort of major rift within the country. Um, you know? Yeah, something of a bloodless coup. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, in in Cayman, um, things are different than in a lot of places. Mm. In a lot of places, the solution to political dissatisfaction is political unrest, right? And in Cayman, that is a little bit incompatible with our culture. We aren't about making scenes. We aren't about rising up. Now, it may be that that makes us the ultimate doormats, and um, there's, there's, there's fair argument to be made there. 
But I think we could maybe get the change we want by going down that route and, and the demonstrating and the yelling and the, the political unrest, as, as you would see on BBC Nightly News. But I think we would lose ourselves in doing that. You know, mm-hmm. in, in winning, we would lose. Well, you know, it, it's, <clears throat> again, I, it comes back to where we are as a people and is there a national vision? And not just shaped and directed by the politicians and their handlers, but by the public. Yeah. Give us an example. Not, not again, you said directly correlated to what we're talking about, but we just have a two-week exercise as a means to fund some of those who are either underemployed or unemployed. Now, could this be an initiative that is ongoing to keep our streets and our roads and our communities cleaner? But then after this transpires, where are we as a people to continue to take pride into our places and not, you know, throw our garbage from our cars, not just dump, you know, whether it's yard waste or household waste out, you know, on the lot next door or carry it somewhere in the dikes or wherever it is and, and dump it. That has to come down to an ethos of a people who are not just respectful but are respectable. Um. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not suggesting an entire sociological experiment here. I'm I'm really just um, fixating on this singular point, which is we need an ultimate check and balance um, to the democratic system that we have. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if you give somebody power, if you have the po- you have the power to give other people power, you should have the power to remove that power. Now, an election isn't necessarily removing power from that person. They could choose to retire. Right? It's not. It's not really in your hands at all, other than the fact that you can vote for somebody else. Mm. But if someone is doing a bad job, or they're acting against the public interest, or they're, uh, you know, they've lost the, the public confidence, etc., then you should have the ability to remove them from office. Right. But even to your point about, you know, the, the sort of my large scale psychological experiment, are we probably willing to consider that we're seeing social engineering taking place right before our eyes and we're not even aware of it, at least some of us. Well, look at the the cultural landscape. Uh, look at the political landscape. Look at the you know the physical landscape. Has it been deliberately uh, changed, or is it changing uh, in a way that we think would be beneficial long term? I think this is a case of of the pot and the frog. the 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 boiling water is being turned up very, very slowly. To the point that we're barely feeling it, we're mm. barely aware of it. So it's you engineering. Cook, you're you're cooking just the same, and it may not even be deliberate um, social engineering. I mean, Sun Tzu would say that never ascribe to strategy what can be explained by stupidity. I mean, bad things can happen with nobody really being behind it. But whether that whether it's intentional or unintentional, we're in a situation where the political structure, the leadership structure of the country does not appear to be in the hands of the people. It appears to be, to some degree or other, in the hands of special interests and, and basically the, the merchant class. And, I mean, we're, we're certainly not the first country to be faced with that problem. But at the end of the day, we still have a tiny bit of power in our hands, and we're, we're, ab- we're abdicating it at this point. Well, that's maybe the challenge. We've abdicated our responsibility as, as parents, <clears throat> perhaps as voter. Uh, perhaps as policymaker, as you shared, you know. And if so, what do we do now? Um, what we do now is we demand constitutional change. Everybody wants to wants to change the constitution for various reasons. That's fine. Let's let's change all the things that people want changed, but let's not ignore this most important change. Okay, so you say we now just use the word. You said demand constitutional change. We who and how? Well. To my knowledge, it can be triggered by referendum too, can't it? Yeah, but look at look at the the. Hmm, don't want to say the rhetoric necessarily, but look at what's transpiring now. There's a growing divide, uh, and one semblance there are some people saying, "Hey, just provide the facts out there so we can get an understanding of what is happening." Whether it's education, whether it's the infrastructure development for the airport, the cargo or seaport. What are we doing relative to immigration? And yet, some people, if they ask a question, uh, they get sort of castigated for it. Others who are saying, well, you know, if we're going to move forward, 
with a semblance of a civilized society that not only exhibits a lone, uh, a sense of civility, but has uh, credibility and respectability as its mantra. Where are we going to get that if we don't have, as you shared, you know, the leadership uh, at the fore? That's a that's an ex- that's an excellent question, really. Um, I think the people of the Cayman Islands are. are largely an orderly people. We're largely a passive people. We're content to leave power in the hands of the people that we've given it to so that they can conduct the people's business on our behalf. This is That's the, the social contract that we signed and we're content to live with. If things were going fine, nobody would be, or very few people anyway, would be pushing for change. Mm-hmm. But it's not going fine. And the leaders that we've chosen for ourselves are not working on our behalf. So we really have no choice but to take it up on our own. And I think people have certainly have gotten much better at organizing, certainly than at any other point in their history that I'm aware of. Um, and it, I guess we just need to focus on a single task, which I, which may be to um, offer up referenda on just a singular focus, which is constitutional amendment, mm-hmm. rather than trying to fight six or seven different battles at once. You know what? And maybe maybe that person, whether it's a you know, a sitting member of the Legislative Assembly, whether it's an aspiring member, maybe it's a former member, maybe it's just someone who says, you know what, we don't have no horse in this race other than I'm looking long term for a stable, safe, secure, you know, prosperous society. But if that person or a group of people were to you know, to come forward advocating something similar, how receptive do you think uh, that notion would be how much support and traction you think they would gain? Um, well, we don't have a great track record with backing people who put their necks out on the line, but ultimately we're going to have to try or nothing's going to change. Mm. Right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you there and see what other people have to yeah, say. Yeah, man. This. Thank you for, for giving us something to consider and certainly for taking time to share your thoughts with us. Always insightful, man. Enjoy your afternoon. You too. All okay, right. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful afternoon. A nine four nine eight thirty seven one eight hundred five three four eight two five five. It's open line. Let's pause and take a short break. When we come back, more talk today. Nursing, education, social work, media studies, hospitality, electrical, plumbing, AC. Wow, I didn't even know that the University College of the Cayman Islands offered all that. Yes, all that and more, as well as event management and QuickBooks. They also did customized training for our staff last month. Hey, didn't your son just graduate from high school? Take him so he can apply for the fall semester. Pursue your academic and professional goals at UCCI. Admissions are ongoing. Classes start August 27th. Visit them or call 623-8224 to learn more. Let's go. Radio Cayman's Breeze Fusion Walk Run is coming. Saturday, November 3rd in Grand Cayman and November 24th in Cayman Brack. Visit caymanactive.com to register today or stop by Radio Cayman on Elgin Avenue. This year's funds go to benefit the NCVO, the John Gray High School Music Department and the So-and-So Club of Cayman Brack. Chamber members believe that a good education can change lives. That's why many chamber businesses fund scholarships, provide internships, and volunteer in the classroom. It's time to be recognized. Submit your education initiative and demonstrate why investing in education matters. Visit businessexcellenceawards.ky for details. The Chamber's Business Excellence Awards are proudly supported by Caribbean Alliance Insurance Company, Cox Lumber, and Deloitte. Always separate debris from household garbage after a hurricane hits. Debris includes roofing materials, down tree branches, and metals. All items of debris must be placed in separate piles to the front of the property or at a side that is easily accessible to collection trucks. Debris must be placed in a location that will not cause obstruction to roadways or come in contact with electrical lines. For more post-hurricane waste management tips, visit the DEH website at www.deh.gov.ky. Radio came and maintaining the innovation. On a daily basis, making it easy to connect with you, our listeners. Add us to WhatsApp today, 925-3261. That's 925-3261. Radio Cayman. Send a text or voice note. Can I send a request, please? Uh, you don't really have to ask us. Just send a request. This is a shout-out to my ex. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman maintaining the innovation. 
But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waging to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. It's open line 949-8037. Or toll free with the compliments of flow at 1-800-534-802. 55, and you can WhatsApp 9253261. Call and share your thoughts with us as we look forward to having you, you know, be a part of our discussion, our conversation, our program for today. Uh, last caller always makes some excellent points. Any particular review or comment that you want to sort of weigh in on? Well, go right ahead if you want to pick him up on what he shared. This notion of a, a recall, what do you think of it? I know it's some would say, oh, you know, people want that so that they can easily disrupt the, you know, the democratic process. But the issue is, if you have a person who is elected and you don't think that person is doing a job, maybe the person did something that you felt, well, that's just, you know, not what you'd expect of an elected, you know, member of the legislative assembly. Could you just target, uh, as, as we use that word deliberately, that individual go through an accepted uh, mechanism to have that e- individual recalled, and then there's a potential uh, an election for that uh, one seat. Is it now uh, imperative that we consider that, given what uh, someone shared with me just recently, and speaking to the whole issue of constitutional advancement in light of some of the discussions that are taking place, where it seems that some both uh, elected politician as well as you know aspiring politician, a champion for a you know, move towards independence. His view is that, as he understands our constitution, we have uh, set within the office of the the premier the power to sort of hire and fire you know, the cabinet. And if you want to be able to, you know, sort of have a vote of confidence against an individual like you could, you know, before this new constitution, well, that's no longer possible. You have to move a vote of confidence against the entire government uh, through bringing it uh, in the form of one against the premier. When he said, you know, the premier may be excellent, the rest of the cabinet might be excellent. It might just be one individual who you figure this person isn't really doing it. Now, that would be, as I asked him, you know, within uh, the realm of the an ambit of the legislative assembly and the elected members, would be like a recall in a sense. Though, even though the person would necessarily lose the elected seat, the person would be removed from office if they were in cabinet or exco as it was. Now it's different. So if that can exist then, and if the system is now that the premier, whether it wants to reshuffle the cabinet, whether it wants to reward loyalty, whether it wants to punish, whatever the reasons that happen that we see uh, politicians you know, sort of use uh, in other jurisdictions, why can't, uh, his question is, why can't the voting populace do likewise? Someone is in an elected position, don't feel that person no longer, uh, you know, has the confidence of the electorate. Couldn't the electorate say, hey, you know, we would like that person recall. And there has to be a, a particular way. It shouldn't be, as he says, you know, at a women fancy. It shouldn't be something that is done willy-nilly or, you know, that easily. But it should be, shouldn't be it almost impossible or not at all. What is your view? And again, you know, are we at a stage where we need to even look at the other aspects? Much more, you know, knowledgeable folks about our constitution and our politics out there. Why don't you weigh in? Nine four nine eight or thirty seven or one eight hundred five three four eight two five five. Now, last evening, uh, well, I shouldn't even say it's evening uh, after the show. Uh, to what I you know, consider to be sort of you know, financial wizards had a chance to share. And they said they were going through uh, the government's budget. Uh, they said they really you know, thought it would be a much easier exercise, one that was perhaps a little bit, you know, not just easier to do, but easier to understand. But at the end of the day, as they're going through, they're wondering whether if we're going to be considering value for money and considering how we're spending our money and organizing our you know, our structures and the like, would it not be some things that could transpire to make it better? 
give as an example. They said, you know, we have a port authority or we have an airport authority. And when the airport authority and the civil aviation were separated, thought that was good. One is administration operation. One is sort of oversight and regulation. Makes sense. But a port authority, you know, whether you're coming through an airport or a seaport, you know, wouldn't it be better to just have one entity that manages, you know, the operations? And you, you know, one of the guys was sharing, would that result in, you know, more efficiencies? Would it be safer in terms of a border security and the processing of goods? You, you buy something, uh, as he said, you know, he has from time to time, you you bring in a car or, or appliances or building materials or whatever it is you're bringing in and it comes through uh, this seaport. But maybe there's something that you need urgently or there's something that is perhaps just as cost effective to come in through you know, the air cargo. So you have to go to you know, the airport. Each one ends up uh, to a great extent at you know, customs and the like. Now, would it be more efficient in this area of processing and making things more cost effective if you have one streamlined operation? Uh, he said the notion that government was setting about to merge you know, customs and immigration and looking at our border security. Why not do the same with our airport and our seaport? Well, what is your thought? A949-8037. We're toll free with the compliments of flow at 1-800-534-8255. Likewise, you can WhatsApp 925-3261. Now, they also shared that we have a number of different you know, sort of authorities, the, the different stature authorities, some of which you said perhaps we should just get rid of altogether. Says, so for instance, the Central Planning Authority. Well, what is uh, the point of that? Uh, he said you know, he's a strong capitalist. And the idea of you know central planning just in and of itself sounds a little bit you know like communism and socialism, but irrespective of what the Auditor General in the past may have reported about you know and the potential conflicts and the perception thereof, could we not just have the technicians uh, within the planning department ensure that plans meet you know the the law complies with the regulations and are able to be approved. If there's a large project, whether it's for infrastructure, whether it's a you know, commercial venture, maybe this should be a, a semblance of you know, public meetings and hearings, so that the public is at least you know given opportunity whether the public wants to you know, avail itself. Well, that's, that would be better. So just like you know, in the financial sector, certain things have to be put in the gazette. And once that is done, that satisfies the requirement. How many people actually pay attention to those things? Only the people who are, you know, by law required to pay for it, make sure it's published. They keep a copy for their records so they can check the mark. Yep, we've done that. Perhaps those people who have some of the interest. But how many people really see what is, you know, published in the Gazette? Now, is it because of cost? Is it because of access? Well, it could be all sorts of reasons. Likewise, you know, we force applications to be advertised in the print media. Well, why? You know, is that just a, another prohibitive cost? Is that making money for an identity? Why not have our town halls and other civic structures available so that if there is a you know, particular project, maybe it's an application to vary the zoning, perhaps it's an application to amend, you know, a setback or the like, Maybe those things have to be, you know, published in you know, a meeting held in the town hall, for instance. Now, again, should that be something that is better? Or should it just be within the purview of the planning authority through the planning department, not the, you know, sort of statutory board? Or should that only rest in the hands of those elected to cabinet as it is now? Well, your view, 949-8037 or 1-800-534-8255. Or you can WhatsApp, 925-3261. Now, the other sentiment expressed uh, by the individuals was that not only are we looking at maybe potentially, you know, merging some departments or likewise, you know, getting rid of a number of the statutory authorities, uh, are there other things? Uh, they gave us an example, the prison. 
do we fully understand the financial cost of operating the prison? It says it's been expected that it's you know around seventy thousand dollars per prisoner. Now, is that a lot of money? Is it uh, perhaps that we need to spend more? Now, they give as a view uh, just from the financial perspective. If we're talking about building a, a new you know prison facility, is that another two hundred million? As some have suggested. What about operating costs? You know, will that you know run to you know fifteen, twenty million, thirty, forty million per year? Would it be better if we looked at it and be able to understand what it is that we're trying to achieve? If we got people in prison and they could be better served by uh, making amends and restitution within the community, as opposed to just being incarcerated and costing the community, could we put them to work? On our roads, yes, we'll pay them, but maybe if the going rate is a dollar, maybe they'll be paid 50%. Um, perhaps it's not that they're only going to be paid, but their work has to be as a way to make restitution for certain things. Uh, he also shared those individuals that are in prison, are there skill sets that we're lacking in our workplace that they could be used? Now, obviously, he said you wouldn't want to put someone in prison who, you know, perhaps behave you know, in a manner that constitutes financial fraud, put them in a financial institution. Now, would you want to put someone who was physically violent against children you know, working in a school or an environment? But if you were in prison because you know, maybe it was some other mishap and you have a particular skill set, surely you could be you know, reintegrated. This could be part of that rehabilitation. Now, would the cost be a lot less because you're not physically housing the individual? But what about the other impact, the loss of productivity to society, uh, the cost of you know, that person, not only to the family and the like? Uh, for financial wizards, you know, I shared that they, they spoke uh, to a great extent about the social implications when it came to the prison. You may have a particular view. You may want to weigh in on it. 8949-8037 or one 800 534 Eight two five five. Or you can WhatsApp nine two five three two six one as we invite you to share your thoughts with us. We're approaching our two PM headline news and we're gonna get a chance to hear what our excellent news team has been working on. Uh when we come back it'll be the open line. Uh we're hoping to uh, maybe get a chance to, to share some things with you, but uh, if it materializes it it does. And if it doesn't, well it'll be open line and either way. You get a chance to be informed, involved, and share with our listeners. Uh, there are a number of you who have shared a few things in relation to beach accesses. I have not uh, you know, put publicly. As I said to you, I don't believe uh, that is something that is appropriate at this stage, not just because of the conjecture, not just because of the potentially you know, defamatory nature of it, but if it's unsubstantiated, non true, it could you know, result in some liability despite that. If you are in a view that an access, a path that is you know, a public right away is being blocked and you've you know, brought it to the attention of the police, as an example. Someone said a particular footpath has been blocked, a gate has been installed and a padlock and chain has been you know, sort of latched across the gate. Well, if you go to the police as a ledge and they have say, well, nothing we can do about this private property and private matter, then go to planning and... Uh, See what they say, lands and survey. Take a picture, you know, send it to the media and say, hey, look, you know, do some league work. Uh, and with respect, you know, don't leave it for somebody else to do. You know, what is it that we oftentimes share? You know, evil prevails when good men do nothing. Well, like anything, you want something done and you want it done right, maybe you got to do it yourself. Hey, 949 837 or 1 800 534 8255. Let's pause and take a break, pick up our news headlines. When we come back, more talk today. From district to district, moving through the waters to Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Your station, your voice. All things Cayman. One radio, many people. This is home. Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman. Radio Cayman's newsroom. These are the biggest stories right now. 
Many local schools will be back in session at the end of the month and the National Gallery is once again offering the after-school art program, the Walker's Arts Club. Registration for the art program opens on Wednesday. Applications can be submitted to education at nationalgallery.org.ky. There are 15 spaces in each club and registration is done on a first-come, first-serve basis. Good afternoon, I'm Dion Anglin with your headlines. In news elsewhere... Thousands of fans are expected to pay their respects to Queen of Soul Aretha Franklin, who died nearly two weeks ago. Franklin's body will be on view for two days at an African-American museum in her hometown, Detroit, before her funeral day on Friday. The museum also hosted civil rights activist Rosa Parks' viewing in 2005. The father of a Nigerian schoolgirl being held by Islamist militant groups since February has told the BBC he is delighted to hear her voice in a recently released audio recording. His daughter was kidnapped along with more than 100 girls from Dapchi town. The others were later freed, but she was kept reportedly because she refused to convert from Christianity to Islam. And French Environment Minister Nicolas Hulot has resigned on live radio in a dramatic announcement that caught even French President Emmanuel Macron by surprise. The former TV presenter and green activist said he had quit after a series of disappointments in attempts to address climate change and other environmental threats. That's a wrap of your headlines. I'm Dion Anglin. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. It's open line 949-8037 or 1-800-534-8255. Or you can WhatsApp nine two five three two six one. Either way, share your thoughts and have us uh, perhaps benefit from not only your counsel but your input. Nine four nine eight thirty seven or one eight hundred five three four eight two five five. Now, interestingly, an uh, opportunity sort of presented itself recently where a fellow was saying that he was, in his mind. You know, offered a chance uh, through his organization uh, to leave Cayman for a bit and work in another office in another jurisdiction. And he thought, okay, great. You know, I just need to put some things in place, but would be happy to do so. You know, make sure the family is okay with you know the separation and everything's in order. It's a challenge, but you know, I always said, you know, Caymanians need to be willing to take up the mantle and go overseas. One of the things he said has happened often is that that. Uh, it's one of the things that is shared that they're not willing to do. And he said, well, you know, the seafarers did it. Why not be positioned to do it in this era? So they negotiated and were talking of you know, when would be the opportune time to do it, how long would be the stint, you know, which of the offices would be available. And equally, he said, you know, how... You know, how would it play out? You know, what about pay and housing and the like? And says, you know, initially, you know, it looked receptive, and the more enthusiastic he became, seemingly the less willing the organization. Uh, perhaps it transpired that it was maybe one or two people in the organization who weren't as keen to, you know, give him the opportunity. And he said, you know, hasn't uh, necessarily materialized as yet. But he thought, yeah, is this part of the Sort of, you know, I guess he, what was the word he used, you know, this dang of a carrot. And when you, you know, don't take it up, it's used against you. But when you're willing to embrace it, then you're denied the opportunity. And he wonders if this is just something that is continually facing, you know, individuals who are trying to improve their lot. And is this part of the issue of the, that frustration and, you know, 
when the Caymanians are complaining about that they're facing. When you look in the organization, you look around and uh, there's really little or anything you can do other than come to work and do your job and keep your head down and cash your paycheck. If you voice a concern about something that has happened in the organization, maybe it's a procedural error, uh, as he said, he's done from time to time. Perhaps it's uh, an issue where you know, a client needs uh, something done, but it doesn't seem to get the priority because another client needs something else then who has you know, more weight or uh, whose agent, for want of a better word, uh, has more weight and clout in the office. So this thing that should be a priority isn't because of you know, who's asking and who's demanding. Here, 949-8037 or toll free with the compliments of Flo at 1-800-534-8255. Uh, Susan is able to stand by to check your calls and uh, share your sentiments with us equally. 949-8037 or 1-800-534-8255. Now, I share that with you because he says, you know, he's now looking at a, a prospect where you know, what what should he do? Should he keep saying, hey, you know, I'm willing to go. You know, might be the right time, but, you know, might be for a year. Maybe we can just do it for three months or six months. Just get introduced to another place, you know. I said, why not we, do we look at it maybe for a longer time and see if the family could come along. You know, always easy. Now, we shared that it's something that should be available to Caymanians, either as students to study abroad, as UCCI has oftentimes, you know, sort of been trying to put in play, but it should be for you know, Caymanians to want to do. Uh, he says he recalls uh, a very, very long, long, long time ago where a family member that took his young family at that time across the pond uh, to study, and you know, while they were there, well, they went to school and they spent a couple of years, and you know, to this day, he says he's always wondered, you know, if that wasn't part of the reason that gave you know those children that head start that have a hand, maybe it caused them to realize very early on that the world is bigger than just the shores of Cayman, that the competitive nature to survive and to succeed has to be developed from a very early age. Uh, he shared, for instance, if you look at those who are involved with coaching, you know, some of the athletes, in particular the team sports, as good as they are technically, one of the things that he believes that, uh, sort of they lack is that uh, that drive, that you know, competitive spirit, that, as he puts it, you know, that aggression on the pitch. When they go there to play, you know, they play with a sense of, you know, it's a gentleman's sport, but are they always <coughs> playing oh, <coughs> excuse me, with that desire to win? Not just win at any cost, but, you know, to play from the opening whistle, you know, to sort of the closing bell. Uh, he shared that we don't need to make that uh, sense of an aggressiveness in our society, but he believes that that's what is happening on our streets and in our schools to some extent. Uh, the children are acting out because they're not quite sure how to you know, get what is it that they think that they want or need. They're not you know, being treated and responded to in a manner that develops them. Uh, he shared that as he was volunteering you know, through a particular program and they reached out to some young fellows, he found that a number of them really lacked guidance. Uh, they were sort of misdirecting their aggression and their energies. But I wanted to find out that at the end of the day, uh, some places where they were, they sort of congregating, and that was being recognized and rewarded, not in a constructive, productive manner. But he thought, how do we have that on one hand in one area and we're seemingly you know, not able to develop it in a positive way in another area so that it's you know, a recognition that if you want to gain a level of success, you have to be willing to work hard. Hey, 949-837-1-800-534-8255 or you can send us your thoughts on our WhatsApp. 925-3261 or if you choose, you can email talktoday at c-a-n-d-w dot k-y. Now, another uh, thought that was shared with us in relation to sort of where the country is at and the idea that or we're spending a lot of money and not always seemingly getting any great value. Uh, is that uh, 
fellow, and simply because he did not necessarily have you know, all the information to hand, uh, he thought it would be almost imprudent. But he he was questioning you know, not just the government's public sort of comments and seemingly resolve to move education, but if they're going to continue with the construction of uh, the school projects, is it uh, going to be an instance? He, he questioned whether the physical plant is going to be costing, you know, tens of millions and more than perhaps uh, we can't afford to spend at this time. And then when it's constructed, not just the maintenance, but how is it going to be utilized? And will the other, you know, sort of antenna changes that should come? Or will it be that the public understands that this investment in education isn't just the physical, you know, financial outlay of the government or the continuing maintenance, but it has to be us as parents and the students and as teachers in the system making sure that the students are continually learning. A nine four nine eight thirty seven or one eight hundred five three four eight two five five. And uh, as Miss Susan shares, you know, with us uh, from time to time, you know, the sentiments that uh, you know, those callers really all fear. You know, we do our very best to see how we can review, you know, with a view to being able to share them with our public. And sometimes uh, it's just not possible. We don't seem to get uh, the level of information that we need. Uh, sort of case in point sometimes, uh, questions will come and ask, well, you know, have there been changes with respect to, you know, public vending on, on the beaches and the roads and the like? Uh, one uh, one lady had called to share that uh, certain uh, days of the week and primarily uh, over the weekend, there are more and more people who are setting up you know tables and tents along the roadside, whether it's the sale of agriculture produce to what seems to be you know crafts and arts and clothing and other items that uh, maybe could be within the home as a yard sale, but it's there is uh, vending along the public ways. Uh, is that something that we need to look at and address? Or is it that you know, we're seeing that people are being you know, ingenious and creative entrepreneurial, and therefore if this is not you know, creating an illegal act that causes a problem to others, then shouldn't it be you know, accepted and permitted? Your view, 949-8037 or 1-800-534-8255 or you can WhatsApp 925-3261. And as we uh, pause shortly to take our final break for this segment, we invite the caller to share your thoughts with us. A uh, quick look at something that was sent through. And when I come back, if it's a, a topic we can share, well, do likewise. But give us a call during the break, 949-837 or 1-800-534-8255. We go to our phones. Good afternoon. Welcome. You're on Talk Today. Good afternoon, Sterling. How are you? Blessed and thankful. How about yourself? Gee, I'm blessed too, you know, but the way these people drive on the road, Sterling, it's ridiculous. Uh, sadly, it's, it's, true. It's, 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 so, it's so careless and, and so not, no, absolutely no concern for anybody. The people are just driving like they're not going to fence. You know, I can tell you straight up. I'm just driving, coming up, and every road that I got to that have a giveaway that I'm on the mean, everybody fly out in front of me. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, man. Nobody wants to stop. No courtesy, no common sense. No huh? stops. They're not being no stop sign. The only thing they stop now is the stop light. And I've seen a lot of people running those lights, the red lights. Mm-hmm. But they, would, uh, they, 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 uh, they, they refuse to, 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 um, to give way or to stop at any stop signs. And I mean, you could be right there at the junction and there's a boom fly out in front of you. Mm. What in the world is going on? Where are they going? Where are they going? Well, that's the thing, you see. I mean, I've seen a number of instances, as you shared, where, thank God, you know, nobody has been injured or worse, but why? What's the... You know? And I mean, I'm on the road every day and I see it every step of the way, every road I drive on. I'm going to give you one incident that happened to me two nights ago. Mm-hmm. And it's been boiling inside of me that I had not called and said something to somebody. I'm driving on a little narrow road where 
sometimes it's it's, a, it's in a, in, the, in the community, private in, uh, neighborhoods, and there are always cars parked either one on one side or the other of the road. So I'm coming on the road, and I have the right of way, and here comes this vehicle flying to try and race me to get in front of the vehicle. So I, I got right there in time. He's right alongside the car, and I'm right in front of him. He comes out of the car and blasts me. Road rage had him going. I mean, like, he stopped, he opened, he hood. I'm saying, I'm going to call 911 because you do not have the right of way. You guys are driving like you don't have no sense. I have the right of way. The vehicle is on sort of in front of you on your side of the road. You're supposed to stop behind it and wait for me. I find in myself having to wait for everybody. And I got a ready way in everybody. I got stopped for them to get around the car when I should have been going straight and they've been the one waiting. Now, this man proceeds to open the hood of his car and disconnect and stuff. Say, my car break down. My car break down. I'm not moving. And he, it ain't nothing left that he hadn't told me. And I, I, I was so angry I didn't dial 911. <laughs> the people came out of the, the house where the car was parked and they took sides with him. And then they told the person that drove the vehicle to move it because they, I decided to say, look, yeah, I now move in tonight. Because I did not buy my license. And I'm driving from time I'm a teenager. And I'm up in my 50s now. And I've never had an accident. And I don't see... I say, you people come here. I don't know where you get your license from. But we grew with the country. We grew with the island. We grew with the roads. We know the roads. You might know the roads. But if you come here and you're going to drive here, this is my word to all you people that, that are here now, that are visiting or living amongst us, that some of you all never had seen a car or know a license in your life. I've been driving donkeys or pushing something or riding bicycles. You all come here and you have absolutely no respect for us, for, for us drivers, seasoned drivers. And I'm, I'm appalled at the way it's going on. And the police needs to do a better job. If they got to go and sit by every junction, nearest, every yield sign, nearest stop sign, to, 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 to curb this, it's, it's, it's not going to stop till something bloody well happened, God forbid, and some, some, something really, really bad happened. Hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, I mean, that lack of, of courtesy. As you were sharing, someone is, you know, I sent through a, a quick video. Uh, it looked like a car, you know, just going on the right side of the road and weaving in and out. So, lack of lack of attention to you know some must have on the roads and lack of courtesy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was driving on Sunday. Not cutting your dream, but I, I'm gonna go after this. I was driving on Sunday, and a car pulled out from a little side road. A truck, sorry, a truck loaded with debris and stuff like they had just cleared up somewhere from the, um, old trees and whatever they had chopped down. And it just swung out of, out of the little side road in front of me. I have a video of it. And the stuff was falling all over the place. And he was just railing going to turn down in, in Chester Place up in Bordentown. Sorry to how call you mean, but they need to do better. All these big trucks on the road, they're driving like they're totally insane until something happens to somebody's child or somebody. And then that's when they're, they're going to do something. The authorities are going to take it by the reins and do something about it. And they need to get all these road cars off the road. Because half the people that are driving do have no license. They don't know, they don't know the roads. I'm sorry for writing. Have a great day. God bless the King and I will. Amen. Yeah. Blessings here. All right. Take them another the call before we go to break, Ms. Susan. Oh, she says, no. Listen, I'm in charge, she says. We're going to take the break. Call her. Stay on the line, please. Stay tuned for Talk Today. As parents and a community, it is our desire to have happy children who are able to cope with all of life's challenges. However, despite our loving support, sometimes our children suffer in silence and put on a brave face. Do you suspect that your child is experiencing problems, secretly struggling to cope and is overwhelmed? If there is a possibility that they are anxious, experiencing troubling thoughts and are suffering in silence, it is important to seek professional help. The Ministry of Community Affairs, in partnership with the Alex Panton Foundation, is hosting five community presentations on self-harm prevention this month and in September. These free talks cover how to spot the warning signs and who to turn to for expert advice. A question and answer will follow each talk. To get more information on the dates and venues of these presentations, please call 244-2426 or visit the Cayman Islands government website today. Entrepreneurs are risk takers and innovators. They see opportunity where others see roadblocks and defeat. They introduce new products and services that disrupt conventional thinking and trends. Are you one of these innovators in our community? It's time to receive the recognition that you deserve. Apply today for the Chamber's Entrepreneur of the Year Award at businessexcellenceawards.ky. This award is proudly supported by Yellow Media Group. My mom works at the Water Authority. She makes sure we have a clean beach by making our drinking water clean. We use less bottled water. Cayman will stay beautiful. This World Water Week, the Water Authority invites you to take back the tap and choose tap water over plastic bottled water. Visit our social media pages to learn more. Take back the tap. 
The following is a public service announcement. The Council of the Justices of the Peace Association is pleased to advise the public that general document signing services will be provided three days a week in the front lobby of the Government Administration Building. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 12 noon, the following services will be provided by volunteer justices. Witnessing a signature on an authentic document. Certifying a document as a true copy of the original, once the original has been provided. Witnessing a signature and completing the portion on a Cayman Islands or British passport application, including acknowledging that the photo provided is a true likeness. Please note a JP must have known the passport applicant for no less than two years before signing the application. Identification cards must be presented and persons seeking the services of the justices must ensure that proper attire is worn when visiting the government administration building. But I do have some questions. Talk today. Cayman Islands for most listeners participation program. Talk today. Because there are more questions than answers. What the public is saying. Waiting to take your calls right now. Sterling Dwayne Ebanks. Hey, good afternoon and welcome back to Talk Today. Thank you for joining us. And we had a call online. Let's see what happens once Ms. Susan checks it out. 949-8037 or 1-800-534-8255. You can also WhatsApp 9253261. Try your phones, Ms. Susan. Hey, good afternoon and welcome. You're on Talk Today. Good afternoon, Sterling. Good afternoon, man. Thank you so much for holding on. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, you all always know when it's me. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I know I I know it's I know it's you now when you <laughs> come on here, yeah, but that's about it. Yes, you know, um, the lady on the guest calling the bar to the traffic, I could, if I was closer to her, I would shake her hand because everything she said, it is true. Mm. I was coming on two stops down this morning, and um, all I knew was when this car was got up on my um, driving side, and then um, when he did got up on my driving side, there was a car coming out of the, the very um, opposite direction, and he would have collided into that car. And I would, it would have been three, three, three cars in one accident this morning, so down. So as we got further down into Walker's, then we got on Walker's Road, he goes and do the same thing again as we go to overtake a car that was ahead of me. Ahead of him, a car is coming up this side road. So there's two side roads this morning that this guy could have killed me or the other person that was behind him because I was one car down behind when he um, did what he did. So there's a lot of crazy driving out there. I don't know why it's going to get any better because if you keep issuing um, license to people who know nothing about driving and no disrespect to anyone, the facts remain that if you're going to get a driver's license, you don't come out here and try to kill who you see on the road. You be careful of your driving. And a lot of our roads are small and narrow. And people that are not accustomed to driving, they come on these little narrow roads and they think that they can control the road and take up the space that they need and the heck with you. You wait and when I cross, you come, you come next. They don't work like that. So they have a lane going, one lane coming. They may not look like there's two lanes there, one going, one coming. But it is, it's the fair. And if they're not even divided with a yellow mark or white mark, whatever the case may be, it has to be fair. We are just out of control this island and we... The average Caymanian got a step of it. We got to go out there and say what to get ourselves in trouble. And they laugh at us and, and tell us that we're troublemakers and we just and we that. That's the side of the point. We are taking people's lives when we do this foolishness. But that's not what I call for, but mm-hmm. I got that later call. Yes. So what I call you for, Sterling, you know, we got um, the Excite Apartments down there on um, the Sotibus Highway. And I had to stand a barrier all the way from at the top of Butterfield. All the way down to Kimana Bay, practically. You got around the butt, you're going to come to, right? Mm-hmm. Now, um, I don't know what I was thinking when they barricade Lakeside and Sun for emergency. I had a customer, he said, around, you know, they had someone there sick, and for the, for the person to come to get them, they had to do a lot of um, driving, you know, go around to get back down to Lakeside, wherever they was coming from, to get in the park, they was coming from town. You understand? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's good to have all these um, decorative um, gardens on our highways, that we so-called highways. They probably don't call them highways, but I call them highways. But what about saving lives is 
beautiful gardens, more than 407 lives. All of the roads that we have we building now and building, we need to have emergency exit various locations on those roads, the fire trucks, ambulance, and paramedics. I said it before, I said it again. Open some partial of them, those um, decorative gardens that they're still putting here and there. Put a camera there and anyone goes through except those emergency people. Give them a good fine ticket to, to, to you know, enter into there. That will be emergency. I know we'll have some little young ones who want to take a chance and go through it. The camera pick them up. Hey, give them a ticket. I would even waste time to camera the court. Give them a ticket. Hmm. And sterling all this red light running down here on our this road over, that is a dangerous red light section. I don't know if the cameras are walking there or what, but something serious going on at, at that um round up that um, red light there at um this road over. And the one now by Jake Scott. They are running as like the front and center. So, Sterling, I got to go to work. School is back in session. Yeah. I ask the public to please respect the buses on the road for the short period of time that we are on the road. Please don't hurt our children. I thank you so much. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, and thanks to you know people like yourselves who continue to make the appeal to make our roads safer, especially for our children, our school children, uh, students. Thank you so much, Mom. You know, as the caller shared, schools are getting on the way in full swing, hopefully, as parents and as teachers, you know, we'll instruct the students to be very cognizant of the roads and road safety. But as drivers, not just in the school zones, not just going to and you know, from schools, but just generally speaking, when we're driving through our neighborhoods, you know, uh, do we see how fast we can go to speed bumps? Uh, fellow said one time, you know, in, in trying to jest, he said there must be speed bumps because you know, people go over there and they speed up as opposed to maybe they should be called, you know, slow bumps. Maybe the name might cause some people. Now, for some of us, we don't pay attention sufficiently and unfortunately when something happens, yes, it's an accident. Yeah, we didn't intend it, but could it have been avoided or mitigated? If only we were a little bit more cautious and considerate uh, the video I saw uh, that, as I was referencing uh, a vehicle is traveling along the road uh, it sort of weaves between cars goes on the right side of the road uh, makes a sharp right turn almost like a 90 degree turn into uh, another sort of secondary road uh, in you know sort of I don't know whether it was trying to overtake or because the vehicle in front of it also made a turn onto that same road. This vehicle then, you know, swerves around and you know, switches back into traffic. Well, how an accident didn't happen then? Oh boy, it's good. Can't tell how fast the car was going, but you know, it looked like it wasn't uh, traveling at a slow speed. Now, if that happened, you know, who would have been injured? Who would have been at a fault? And probably been too late if somebody died, because. That's my knowledge. You know, no human can raise the dead. Please, you know, it's an appeal for many of us who have an opportunity to ask you. Drive with a little bit more caution, consideration, a little more respect, and a little bit more patience. And uh, hopefully, it'll make a difference. Hey, tomorrow, we invite you to be a part of our discussions. Join me, start a corner in the morning for the record. Come back for our talk today programming right after the midday news and midday meditation. Captain Eugene E. Banks uh, is expected to be our guest tomorrow. We'll chat with him about a couple of things, including you know, the unfolding farmer's market, as well as you know, some water safety, uh, as he has a program in place. So i got a chance to chat with him about that. And then 1 o'clock, a discussion with our friends at government about the schools inspectorate. And that's what's scheduled for tomorrow. I'll see if it materializes. Enjoy yourselves. It was raining earlier. I don't know, you know where the clouds are, whether they're... Sky is, you know, filled, and it's still a beautiful day here in this wonderful, blessed country. So let's do our part to make it even better. Until tomorrow, be blessed.
Shaken yet standing firm. This is Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands.